Broadcasting from the Any Hour Services Podcast Studios, I'm your host, Mike Wilson, and you're listening to In the House. For those of you who are just discovering the show, In the House is a podcast about the major systems in the house, electrical, plumbing, heating, air conditioning. Each week, I'm joined by a panel of experts. We pick a topic and we discuss it in depth. It's meant to be informative and hopefully bring you some value. On this episode, we're going to be talking about spring prep, getting our air conditioners ready for summer, uh, the maintenance that you can and should be doing, how you can uh, or how you can tell if your air conditioner is actually going to make it through another season. And do you really need to pay a company to come out and service it once a year? We'll find out the answer to those things and a whole lot more on today's show. Today, I'm actually joined by Kevin, Dustin, and Dick. They help to run the HVAC service and installation departments at Any Hour Services. And they are who I ask when I've got a question and want to sound like I know what I'm talking about. So thanks for being here, guys. Thanks Thank for you for having us. us. Well, first things first, um, as we're going into... Uh, summer from winter as winter's wrapping up is there anything that we need to do to quote unquote shut down our furnaces not really shut down no okay talk to me about what we should do i would just make sure that your filter's always clean like normal filters change your thermostat uh unless change you want your thermostat the setting like put a new thermostat in you could also do that if you want to upgrade you know <laughs> always welcome to that let's get specific what, what are we doing want to make sure to change the setting from uh from heat to auto mm-hmm. this time of the year. That way, if you get have air conditioning, you know, those mornings that are getting a little cold and then the afternoons get a little warm, the thermostat will maintain a temperature. That's actually happened at my house now is that it'll, it'll get to, you know, 60 plus degrees in the daytime. And when you got 30 degree uh, temps in the, you know, at night, 60 feels pretty warm. And so I come home and my wife had turned on the air conditioner and she had, just turned it to cool rather than auto. And so then when I woke up the next morning, it was 63 degrees in the house because the air was on. I was like, oh, the thermostat's saying, oh, you want to keep it at this temperature? Well, it's plenty colder than that. So anyway, that's that's a good that's a good tip. Set it to auto, not just to cool. Otherwise, you got to like set it back and forth from heat to cool. Um, what else? Well, no, that's a good point that you brought up there. Not all thermostats have the auto function. Okay. Some, some will say, say auto on there on the fan switch, right? And so you want that set on auto a lot of the time, right? Okay. Uh, but if you have your, you're talking from heat to cool, I mean, a lot of your just typical thermostats, you have to switch it from heat to cool. And so, so a lot of the thermostats you can, they do have an auto function, but it's not on every single one. Yeah. I, I'd say the other thing that I usually tell people is in, in the summer, you don't need to be running your uh, humidifier. So that's another thing to not necessarily shut down the furnace. Cause I, actually you, Tell me this. Do you think that from your experience dealing with people, do most people realize that your furnace and air conditioner, even though we think of them and talk about them as separate pieces of equipment, do people realize that they are interconnected, that they share components that work all year round? Sometimes people don't. I mean, I've been on service calls in the past where um, you're there to repair the air conditioner in the, the customer's mind and you say, well, okay, I need to go look at your furnace. And they'll ask, well, why do you need to look at the furnace? The air conditioner is not working. Well, well, that's correct. You know, the, the furnace and then the air conditioner work hand in hand. You have to have the furnace running properly with the fan there. That's what pushes the air through the house. So they, uh, they definitely have to work together. I've always thought that they should teach a class in high school about the basic mechanical things and just things around a house. You know what I mean? Things in the house. In the oh, yeah, in the house. <laughs> Mike's, um, Mike's gonna he's gonna be trying to get like a college course. Just of this. Call me <laughs> Professor Wilson, <laughs> Professor Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, but but it's true. You know, I've I've had it, it really ranges with people. You know, you have people who you ask to see the furnace uh, or air conditioner, and they actually take you to the thermostat because that's and, true. And, and and to them that's what's doing it. And they don't even realize the the machines and everything else. But then you have, on the other hand, you do have some people who are actually pretty knowledgeable with stuff. So it's there's a pretty big range out there. But I'd say most people, uh, your average customer probably doesn't know a ton about how they work together. Gotcha. Well, hopefully we'll, uh, well, this isn't necessarily an episode on how your system works, but hopefully as we go through and we talk about these different things, uh, you know, one of the reasons that, I wanted to do the show was to be able to share that knowledge because I think there's a whole lot of, uh, at least in the industry, there's a whole lot of like 
not not necessarily intentionally keeping people in the dark, but I've heard, and I think one of the reasons that um, you know we get a bad rep, bad rep sometimes is that there, there are people that will go out there and take advantage of the fact that a customer doesn't know how those things work. You know, unfortunately, it, you know, one bad apple ruins the bunch or the barrel or I don't know. I heard that that saying came from like when you know pirate ships or, or ships crossing the ocean, they would have an apple barrel. And one bad apple would start to like spread and cause the other bad apples to go bad. Side note. Okay. Anyway, are, uh, <laughs> are you sure? Uh, okay. So here's the thing. Uh, let's dive right into the air conditioner prep. Then I, I would say when it comes to your air conditioner, uh, one of the one of the important things. And correct me if I'm wrong. One of the important things to do as you're going into spring and summer is before you actually need your air conditioner is to actually turn it on for about, let it run for 15, 20 minutes and make sure that, you know, get those components moving, get things running so that if there is an issue, you're able to catch it early enough. And it's not necessary. You don't have to wait until it's the first hot day and then something does go wrong and you're trying to find an HVAC company that can come out and deal with it. And good luck with that. Right. Yeah. We, we see that a lot started, but I want to circle back real quick, Mike, to where you're talking about the humidifiers. You don't want to circle back to apple barrels? No, no. Okay. You covered that pretty good, you pirate Mike. Mm-hmm. Thanks. So, they, uh, when, are hum- we, when are we going to, I heard a joke one time, when are we going to evolve as a civilization and see a person wearing an eye patch and not think pirate? Ooh, I don't know if we will. All right. Anyway, humidifiers. So humidifiers, you want to make sure like if you have a bypass humidifier, you want to make sure that that little damper is closed on there. That's one thing when Kevin was talking about how, you know, a lot of people aren't aware that there's actually a, a furnace is att- attached to your air conditioner. There's a little damper that you want to close on your humidifier too before you start running your air conditioner. Why? It, you don't want that bypass air coming through. Like they're designed to go through there and it's not designed for air conditioning. You want that cold air circulating back into the coil. Mm, okay. So that's that's something you want to shut down. But what we see a lot of times with people turn on the air conditioners first time of the year, they think, well, it worked great last year, so it's going to work great this year. But that's not always the case. A lot of times the fan outside may have seized over the winter time. Those bearings could have gone bad. And they go to turn that air conditioner on, that fan doesn't start. We see it a lot of times in the spring and the tune-ups we do. We see it a lot. So like you're saying, turn that on. Just make sure it functions and turns on. That's a great idea. You know, make sure it's actually doing what it's supposed to do and then feel for cold temperature. Okay. I, I think uh, something important to, to when you're getting ready to do that is to think to yourself, what did I do at the end of the year last year? Uh, how many times do you go out? And we've, I've actually been on these calls where people forget that they covered them, you know, and they, they turn them on and, and, some people cover ACs, some people don't, you know, it's a matter of opinion. They're designed to be outside, right? Um, but you, you run that thing with it fully covered and you're going to create potential problems for your air conditioner. It's not going to run right, you know? And so, uh, yeah, you just got to remember, think to yourself, did I do anything with it last year? Yeah. And, you know, when, when, I, when I try and explain to people, uh, you know, how the air conditioner works, I usually break the system down into two major parts. You've got the outdoor unit and you've got the indoor unit where the furnace is. And so let's, let's just start at the outdoor unit. Since you bring that up, there's a couple of things that, that we can do. Um, one, I mean, you talked about uncovering it, but airflow is really, is just as important outside as it is inside. In the last episode, we talked about, uh, you know, filters a little bit and how crucial having the right amount of airflow is going through the thing outside you've got to have airflow in order for it to actually cool the refrigerant that's coming out there so just visually look at it is there anything blocking the unit so if you covered it you would notice that so if you've got tarps or even i've seen people just put a piece of uh, plywood over the top of it to keep things from uh, falling into it so you know uncover things if you've got bushes and shrubs uh, trim those back you know, 18 to 24 inches, make sure that you've got clearance. Cause some people they'll, they'll plant bushes, um, to try and hide it because they think that the air conditioner on the outside is an eyesore. It's just, if you do that, that's fine. Just make sure that you're not, um, and any of you that are going into the spring thinking one of my summer projects is to put a deck, don't put a deck over the top of your yeah, air conditioner. No, we need to have at least five feet of clearance there. So, so talk to me about the, about the airflow. In, in that unit, uh, why is why is that important in making sure that everything is uh, is clear of obstructions? Well, it's just like you said, uh, the, the the airflow. You're thinking about the inside. It's it's the blood of the system. You know, we talked about that in one of the other episodes. Um, outside, it's exactly the same. I, I think one of the things you need to understand is where the air, how it's going through the system. And so, if you look at your air conditioner, 
and uh, you've got the top and you've got the sides and the way that the fan is positioned in the top, it essentially is just sucking air through all the sides and then blowing it straight up and out the top, right? And so if you think about, you know, when you're putting stuff around it or whatever else, if you have stuff right up against it and it's not able to draw air through the sides and then like uh, Richard over there was saying with, uh, with, you know, he said we need some clearance if you're talking decks and things like that. If you were to build a deck over top of it and it's, you know, a couple feet above it, that has potential effect, negative effect on it because the air is going to hit that and it's going to billow back down around it, right? And it's, uh, it's air that's already been, you know, for lack of a better way to say it, used, yeah. right? So that brings up a, a, it kind of goes into my next step of, of something that uh, people should be doing. Examine, like take a look at the, the coils that are on that outside. It's going to look a lot like a radiator. And when it's drawing that air in, those coils essentially turn into the filter for the motor inside. And any large particles, whether it's grass clippings, around here a lot of times it's uh, the cotton like you, there's certain times a year you'll you'll walk outside and it'll look like it's snowing, but it's just the cotton from the cotton trees, and that'll get drawn into. It doesn't get drawn in; it gets drawn towards the air conditioner, and then it all just kind of clogs up, and you end up with this furry blanket on the outside of the coils. and And we go out a lot of times, and that's the issue. It's a very common repair that we have to go on where it just gets blocked up. Uh, and if if, cust if 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 people will take the time to just give it a bath. Mm -hmm. in the spring How do they and, do and maybe even more than once a year i'm um, just when they're out watering the flowers just to go and make sure there's no debris build up on on the coils of that air conditioner now i do want to point out don't use a pressure washer or anything that's high pressure you're just giving it a gentle bath and washing down the debris that can clog in those coils uh, you're going to damage it if you use anything high pressure um, now there are times when it just gets too clogged up or it's been neglected too long where a hose isn't going to be good enough. And then you do need to call a professional to come in and they'll we'll actually need to take uh, the outer casings off the air conditioner and do a more in-depth cleansing. Uh, we can still, you know, get things back in good working order when they've reached that point. But just a, a bath once or twice a year as customers are out doing yard work, uh, people. Make, make sure you find the breaker. Turn the breaker off before yeah. you do this. <laughs> I got a breaker right here. I don't know for those who are looking at the video online. I think you're going to put this on. On uh, social media, anyways. Yeah, we'll post it there as well. The breaker. Well, Make a sure lot of times, off. a lot of times, uh, yeah. First step, if you're going to uh, rinse the thing off, make sure you cut power to the unit. Uh, sometimes there's a disconnect right next to it, and it's it's not a breaker. You lift the, the cabinet up and you pull a little device out, and that cuts the power. Uh, or it may be a breaker, like uh, Richard was talking about. And when you do go to rinse the unit off. Make sure, at least what I usually will recommend, is that you spray from the inside out. If you think about the air sucking everything in, if you want to try and dislodge it, spray the water contrary. You don't have to take the top off or anything like that. This is a, this is a light rinse, like Dustin was saying, so angle that water. And I'll just say spray it until, see if you can get the water to run clear, yeah. um, you know, to get all of the dirt and the debris out. And it is, it is good to do that multiple times a year, you know, whenever you're out working in the yard, just take a look and see if, cause if you're, if you're mowing the yard and you don't have a bag collector and you know, that stuff draws in when you mow past the, the whatever, what are we talking about? Mow past the air conditioner. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, the other, anything else on, on that? No, we get a lot of calls for that. That's like, like Dustin said, we get a lot of calls now. The, the thing is, when it gets blocked like that, you're losing efficiency. So mm -hmm. your air conditioner isn't cooling as efficient as it can, but it's also losing capacity. So it's not cooling as well as it can. We get a lot of calls like that. My air conditioner isn't working. We go out and it's blocked coil. And that's really the only problem. I mean, it could be other stuff, but if it's dirty, it's definitely not helping you out with your utility bills or anything like that. Oh, yeah. The other thing you want to do while you're at the outside unit is, um, again, a lot of these things are just a, a visual inspection. So you can look and see the condition of the unit. Look at the electrical connections. Make sure that you're not seeing exposed uh, wires because these things are sitting out in the sun. I've seen some where, goodness, it, all, it almost looks like there's bare wire showing, but like all of the the outside sheathing, the insulation is starting to fall off and that's not necessarily a good thing. So if you see that you probably, you know, aren't going to want to try and fix that yourself. You want to get someone to come and look at that, but look at that. And then also the, um, 
the refrigerant lines coming out of the house, they usually have a black, uh, you know, foam. What do you call that? Insulation. insulation but yeah. it looks like that tube insulation that you would put on water pipes to keep them from freezing. But that insulation is on there to to make it so that I, why do you, why do you put it on there? So the insulation it uh, it uh, prevents condensation. Mm-hmm. So throughout the house, you figure it's running through your walls, through your ceiling, and gotcha. things like that. It keeps it from actually condensing, having water drip through. It's amazing how much water condensation you can actually get on those copper lines when your AC is running and it's hot outside. I've, I've actually, I went out to, uh, people thought they had a plumbing leak dripping mm. their ceiling one time, open it up just to tear in their insulation. Wow. Not even a big tear. It was just dripping. Yeah. So interesting. Um, yeah. So I, I just wanted to add on to what you were saying with the, Wait, with did, the did you just raise your hand? Yeah, I did. Because <laughs> otherwise they still just he talk. Mike's a talker. He's Look a at him. So. Oh, that's true. <laughs> I felt like I needed to. I think we've got a new rule on the podcast. You want to say something? Raise your hand. <laughs> I, will, I will recognize you and you may speak. Yes. No, just go ahead. Um, no. So I was, while you were talking, I was thinking about uh, your air conditioner. You do. You've got those pipes and electrical lines and stuff. And there's certain things there. And I'm just thinking of myself when I was a kid that you as a homeowner do not remember, do not realize your kids or your pets or whatever else they're doing. And that's one of the reasons why it's important to check, uh, your wire whip that comes from the disconnect, you know, yeah. the actual electrical thing, it's a fun place for a kid to stand just saying, and uh, things can pull out and wires can get damaged really easily that way. Uh, dogs like to chew on things over there. Uh, and if you're anything like I was when I was a kid, one of my favorite things to do was to go get big old fat grasshoppers. And when the AC was running, we'd drop them through and boom. <laughs> you know, it, it was always tons of fun as a kid. But I'm just saying, it's good to visually inspect, like you say, and just make sure nothing's out of the ordinary. 16 minutes if, if you decide that you want to change, <laughs> change Oh, anything. come on. That was, that was gold. <laughs> Pete is listening. They're grasshoppers. I was a kid. They have a spirit. I haven't, I haven't done <laughs> they that. They have a purpose. I haven't done that since I was an adult recently. <laughs> you taught your kids to do that, didn't you? You're like, I did son, come here. Let me show you what I used to do. I did. I said, anyway. We'll okay. Stop. So uh, one of the, it's interesting. One of the things I used to do, not grasshoppers, but I remember having a bedroom that was on a second story and the air conditioner was right below uh, my window. And I used to lean out the window and I used to like, not hawk a loogie, but I'd get a lot of a big wad of spit and I'd like drop it and like let it go down while it was running. And it was so cool because it would just, whew, it would like evaporate and disperse <laughs> before it even hit the thing because of the air coming. I don't know. It just, it looked cool. I don't know. How All right, much Richard, I, tell so, us your story now. No, 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 no. <laughs> that, that would be a lot of editing at that point. <laughs> see, see, but the point is, the point is you don't know what's going on with your air conditioner. 100%. You, re- you really don't. My parents had no idea. You remember when it broke finally? And they just didn't fix it for a long time. And I yep. can't help but think that maybe I contributed to that. Maybe. Just saying. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Um, on the outside as well, you, I mean, you mentioned pets. Um, is there anything you can do to keep? Because we've talked before about dogs uh, like urinating on like on the unit itself. And that eats away those fins the you know those coils that are are there to and the reason you've got all those coils is to disperse the heat more you know you're it's all about heat transfer and so is there anything to do to either one keep the dog from doing that or two to um like once that happens i mean there's not it's not really anything you can do to fix it right no there's nothing we can do at that point i have seen a lot of people and what i would recommend if you do that is just get a a gate or a fence to put around it but there again make sure you're off the air conditioner you know a foot or so that way the dog can't come create or right up against it if you do a fence around it also excuse me uh, if you're going to do a fence like richard says uh make it so it's removable really easily don't concrete it in so we can't do maintenance on it if it's ever needed or do replacements it just needs to be something you can remove gotcha so all right cool anything else outside that people need to be doing make sure the disconnects on we get a lot of calls okay that that won't turn on at all and then they like kevin was saying earlier what did you do last year to shut it off they turned the breaker off and they never turned it back on that's all it is or they had someone help them yes and they didn't realize that that so and so whoever it was just make sure the breaker and the power's on 
Okay. And if you go out there and you clean the thing and you disconnected the power, make sure you turn that back on as a, as a final step before you move inside. Okay, good. All good stuff. Let's, uh, let's go inside then and talk about the things that, uh, people can do, um, to get their system ready for spring. Uh, first thing we talked about filter, uh, obviously checking the filter, paying attention when you, when you do replace the filter, make sure that you pay attention to the airflow arrow to make sure we'll pay attention when you pull it out so that if you're not sure which way the air is flowing but the air usually flows towards the main furnace unit so if you're if it's on the side the arrow would need to be pointing towards the furnace furnace if it's on the bottom the arrow would need to be pointing up towards the furnace so just pay attention to that why is that airflow arrow important on the filter what's the difference of because they look similar on the front and the back the reason for that is on the back side of that, there's usually a screen. So if the filter starts getting taken apart, pulling apart, it actually has a screen wire mesh. So yeah, if you've got one right there, that's a, like right, this one's got a, let's see, this one's gonna be this. So right here, and you can't really tell a little bit, but right here, this little screen right here. So if it tries to pull apart in towards the blower motor, it's gonna prevent it from pulling apart. If you go this way, it can fully come in, part, and you see where they do it and it's separated and the wires and across. That's what the airflow is for. It's just protection for that so that doesn't get torn apart. Gotcha. So there's a protective layer of metal mesh that keeps the filter from the fabric part from being sucked into the the equipment. Correct. That's on that particular one. There's different different types of filters yes. that have different things, you know, but it's all for the basic same reason. Gotcha. Cool. Um, let's see. We talked about turning the humidifier off already. Uh, let's see, checking the drain line is something that I'll talk to people about. Uh, walk, yeah. Sorry, before you move on. You raised your hand, that was very good. I, I was you know, liking this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start doing that more often. I, can I we, think can we use this like as a baton? You have to pass the baton. The, the talking stick? Yes, there you go. <laughs> okay. No, so while you're talking about filters, um, I think it's good to say why that's so important. And it's not just, and, and obviously we talked about this already, but you, know, you were talking about the coils on the, outside unit, the condensing yes. coils. Inside, you've got a set of coils also that are protected by the filter. And if that filter isn't replaced and cleaned regularly, then you have the potential of gunking up and plugging off those coils that you have inside. And it's you've got those on the furnace also, if you have a higher efficient furnace, you've got another set of coils, secondary heat exchanger coils, okay? And so anyway, just wanted to make sure that that was clear. This is, uh, we can't say it enough times, your filter is key, making sure that that's clean. It's one of the easiest things that people can do themselves to avoid the system breaking down. Go ahead. Can I raise my hand too? You did. You just did. You didn't Perfect. even ask permission to raise your hand. I've started you just something. Raised it. You nice. started something. One thing that I personally recommend, and it's kind of a tip, I always make sure my filter is brand new in June and July. That is when your air conditioner is going to run the hardest in August as well. I just spend a little extra money, put a new filter in. If it's, if it's a four inch, you don't necessarily need to, but if it's a one inch, especially if your air conditioner struggles during the summer, Make sure it's a good clean filter. Spend the extra couple dollars, get that clean filter in there, and it'll do a better job. Yeah. You, you know, a lack of airflow causes a lot of different issues. And we talked in the on the furnace, you know, that the thing can overheat and and shut down. But if you don't have the right amount of airflow for the air conditioner, if you haven't experienced, you may you may know someone who has, but a uh, an air conditioner icing over. You know, it usually starts there at the coil. Sometimes it'll, those refrigerant lines will kind of work back. You might see a block of ice out at the, uh, you know, where the outside unit is. And once the thing's iced up, what'll happen a lot, people will call and be like, hey, come and fix this. Like, well, the ice has got to thaw. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it, it's amazing. It's really cool, actually. When you open up a coil that's been frozen, I've seen ice that's literally eight inches thick and it's a solid, I mean, you've got 20 pounds of ice frozen to this coil and it's not going to let air through. And that leads us back to our step that we got sidetracked on, which is checking the drain line. Because if you, if it does end up icing <laughs> over, you're going to want to make sure that that melting ice has somewhere to go. So, uh, talk to, talk to everybody, explain to us, how do we check, uh, how do we check the drain line? Well, there's a couple different ways. One, you can have a tune up, which we can inspect that, which isn't them doing it. Okay. Um, a lot of them have a T in the drain line to where you can see if you dump water in that little tree, uh, that T, you'll see it come out the bottom. Um, it kind of, it's hard because it doesn't backtrack because it'll have a slope. Mm -hmm. um, you can blow air through it. You no, know, lightly don't blow like a, get a big air compressor and try blowing that in there to cause some damage, but you can just pour water down it. L looking at it when it's running also, I mean, if you walk in there and typically these run to the floor drain, 
there's different, you know, styles and stuff too, where you've got condensate pumps, whatever else. But if you go in on a typical system, you've got a floor drain and a PVC pipe that goes down to it. If it's running and you look down and you see water flowing out of it, you know, trickling out of it, it's probably doing what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Probably. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I'll, I'll usually tell people to uh, take, you know, just a cup of water and pour into the top of that T and just make sure that you see water coming out of the bottom into that floor drainer into the condensate pump. Did you have? Some? Yeah, you, you mentioned the condensate pump. Yeah. Uh, sometimes a cup of water is not going to be enough to activate that pump. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a pump, and a lot of people do in their home, and it's just the little box sitting down beside the furnace the pipe goes into, you may need to tump, take a pitcher of water down there and just keep filling it until one of two things happen. The one, the pump turns on and pumps all the water out, or two, the it's pump may to start overflow. to overflow and then you know you've got a problem. That's a good point. I, I never, I've never really told people that like, Hey, that's a step, something that you need to check. Um, but that's a good point. If you do have a pump, you want to make sure that the pump is working as well. Cause I, I've had a pump go bad in my basement and luckily at the time when it went bad, it was an unfinished basement. And so it just, it flooded onto a concrete floor. Wasn't a big deal. But now that my basement is finished, that's something that I make sure I went down last year and was shooting a video and you know, cleaning that pump out every once in a while was a, was a good idea for me to do. Cause it was gross. And you know, even if, uh, even if it doesn't overflow, um, if it was done right and they wire in, they usually have a safety cutoff switch mm -hmm. to where if the pump stops working, it it'll actually, off the air it'll off. shut off the AC. And so you may not end up with water, but you still may end up having a service call where you got to pay somebody to come out and let you know that, Oh, Hey, you're just, this just isn't working. It's, it's something that you can avoid a little bit extra cost. All of this is like really good. So as we're going through these things, I think this all kind of goes back to that first step, that number one thing you do take 15, 20 minutes on a warm day on a Saturday, or when you've got some time right now, everybody's got a lot of time around the house, <laughs> uh, you know, turn it to turn it to cool and get the air conditioner running. Make sure you got cold air coming out of the vents and go around and check all of these things that we're, uh, that we're talking about. Make sure your vents are open. Okay. I'll tell you when, uh, when it comes to the AC, you'll notice an effect a lot faster with closed off vents. What does that uh, affect? It affects your airflow, oh, you know? Gotcha. And so you shut the airflow down. It just, it, the AC portion of your system is more sensitive to it. Or I should say, you'll notice the symptoms of it a lot faster, right? You cut that airflow down. And I mean, you can have a, a coil like we were talking about being an ice block. You can have it freeze up just because it's not able to push enough air because lots of vents have been closed. Right. A lot of times people will close the basement vents in the wintertime to try and force the warm air upstairs. Yes. Uh, and a lot of times that can be enough to cause the air conditioner to malfunction just because they shut a few vents downstairs. Hmm. Gotcha. So that's something to go around and do. Check the vents. Uh, another thing that I'll, t we talked about the thermostat earlier, but uh, in one of the videos that I put online, I, I, I walked through a couple of things. One, to make sure that the thermostat is working. I use, a lot of people don't realize that a lot of thermostats have batteries. And so, you know, popping the thermostat off the wall, see if it's got double AA, A, triple A batteries and changing those things, you know, once a year, I, I usually will give that tip at the beginning of each season. Cause I know everyone's not doing it every six months or whatever, but you know, check the batteries, not even check them, change the batteries once a year in your thermostat. And then, uh, you know, if you want to go a step further, you could actually make sure that the thermostat is um, getting a proper reading of the temperature in the house. You know, take a different thermometer. If you've got a fish tank or something, you know, take a, a, a thermometer, put it on top of the thermostat, let it sit there for a little bit and then compare is the temperature that the thermostat is reading. Is that accurate in, in the room? That can be a sign that things are, are going are going wrong. But I don't know any anything else um, that you guys can think of that are routine maintenance things that people can and should be doing. Dustin, you raised your hand. Um, we talked about this in the last po podcast that we did just a little bit was the ultraviolet lights. Uh -huh. um, those need to be changed okay. on a regular basis. Um, what do you guys recommend? One to two years uh, at the, the longest. It depends on which one. Yeah, the manufacturer, they're coming out with them now. There's one that's out there now that's actually a five year. Okay. So there really are, I would say, you know, find out. What find out what it is that you need website. to do. Yeah, but you're right. I think it's typically about a, one two years right now. Yeah, I can say there's most of them. It's a two year. Yeah. If you have a UV light, at least I've got actually a couple of different uh, UV systems in my house. I've got the I've got the bulbs that was uh, you know like a dynamic bulb, and then I've got a um, 
a Remy halo unit. And both of those units actually have an indicator light on the outside of it that when the, when the light is on, the system is working. And then when the light goes out, either the bulbs have gone out or something like this. So people just need to be aware of what their system needs are there. Correct. Um, let's see. So all of those things that we've, that we've talked about, they're actually, I know all of you, uh, probably keep the owner's manual to your air conditioner by the bed. And if you're having trouble sleeping, you'll, you usually crack that thing open and see I what's was, inside. I was completely reading a manual last night in bed. I'm not going to lie. Well, you, you probably were. Uh, <laughs> but all of those things that we talked about actually come out of a section called uh, routine maintenance. So there's things that you can do. But then as you continue to read on, there's a part called uh, regular dealer maintenance. And right here inside it says, in addition to the routine maintenance that you perform, your home comfort system should be inspected regularly by a properly trained service technician. Many dealers offer blah, 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 blah. So it's saying that they're um, in order, in addition to the things that you do, there are some, this makes it sound like there's some more technical things that need to be done. And we know being in the industry that people don't always do that. Um, but you know, this is kind of that last step that you need to do. Now, the thing that I will tell people is because they'll actually ask, well, when's the best time of year to do it? And I actually say, well, in the owner's manual, it doesn't actually specify whether you do it at the beginning, middle or end of the season. The important thing is just to do it once a year. And it, I compare it to changing the oil in your car, you know, any large piece of equipment that we want to uh, run better and last longer, you're going to do those maintenance items to them. Here's my question to you. Do you really have to like, you know, pay a company to come out and do it? Do you have to? You don't have to do anything. <laughs> you, you really don't. Well, it's a is, very is it Richard answer? Is it smart? Sorry, I could I, I'll let Richard <laughs> change <talk>. the name. <laughs> no, I wasn't saying Richard. Oh, I was saying I understand. You're not being nice. No. Anyway, okay, I, go I, ahead. Oh, I like that. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, what I was saying is you don't have to do anything. Nobody's gonna come and say, hey, if you don't do this, it's going to explode because that's not the case. Um, I think one thing you have to understand, and this is one thing that is really easy to not realize, on that air conditioner, it just sits out there, sits on a pad and doesn't look like anything's really happening. There is a lot going on, a lot of movement that happens inside the system. Uh, just the fact that you've got your power running through it, um, as electricity moves, it vibrates. Things vibrate loose. Uh, most of your issues, uh, electrical issues, um, fires or whatever else usually happens because something has is loose, right? And so as things vibrate, things can loosen up. You've got refrigerant that's moving. You've got the, the stuff that's being driven by the power that's moving in the compressor. And uh, so from the outside, it doesn't look like much is going on, but when in reality, there is a ton happening in that thing. A lot of wear and tear that can happen uh, just through the year. Just like your car, if you don't have regular maintenance, you could get bad gas mileage. Uh, an air conditioner, if it's not tuned properly, if the refrigerant levels aren't accurate, if uh, a lot of these small, small maintenance items we pointed out aren't done correctly, uh, you're going to have higher utility bills. Uh, that's, I mean, that's important. We all want to have the, the lowest cost utility bills possible. Another thing too is the benefit to having a regular tune-up done is a lot of times we can catch problems before they become a really expensive repair. And so ultimately you're going to be saving money by not having the high cost repairs, simply by having us inspect it to make sure we, you know, things are getting caught before they become big. Yeah, and you know, I, in this particular episode, we probably won't dive too in depth of what, I think that's actually probably a good next episode is to actually talk about an air conditioner tune up or the, you know, that annual service that's done and kind of go through our inspection sheet and talk about what we're doing, what we're looking for. Um, so tune in to the next episode to, to hear more about that. But, you know, so that's usually what I'll tell people is in addition to all of these things that you should be doing, that last step that you should be doing is to give a call to, and when I ask the question, do you need to call somebody? Here's the thing. If you've got, if I'm sure you guys do your own maintenance, if you've got family members that are in the HVAC industry or someone in your, you know, in your church or your neighborhood, and maybe you can, you know, have them give them some cookies or buy them some drinks or something, and they'll come take care of it for you. The important thing is having, cause it, it says here, have a, uh, a 
a properly trained technician. And the reason is, is they've got the right tools, gauges, they've got the training and the knowledge to know, because essentially the gist of it is you're looking at, you're, you're taking a bunch of measurements and readings on the system. And you're saying, how is this thing supposed to operate when it's brand new? Because over, over the years, vibration, dust, voltage changes, things, it gets a little bit further out of whack or out of spec. And so you're taking a measurement now compared to what the manufacturer says it should be operating at. And as it gets further out of line, that's where, like Dustin was saying, we can catch things early. So a capacitor sometimes will start to give signs that it's going to go out. So before the thing actually quits on a really hot day, you can actually have a sign that like, hey, this thing's going out. You can be proactive and change it, or you can roll the dice and say like, ah, eh, no, I'm good. It's still working. We're like, mazel tov, go for it. But you know, we're, we're just, uh, that, so that, that final step, finding somebody that can come out there. If you don't know, uh, you know, a company, a good place to look is the company that installed the, the system. They usually are probably going to offer that kind of service. If you don't know anyone, you know, go to Google and look, look up reviews and things like that. If you're in the Utah market, any hour services is happy to, to do that type of thing. Um, any, I don't know. Let's see. We get, on that topic, Mike, we, yes. that's a question we get a lot of the time is what we go out for a tune up and it's like, Hey, you know, my system's working. And then we sit down and say, like, you know, it's working, but there is a few issues you want to address according to manufacturers. Like, Hey, you know, that capacitor may be weak. Sure. Your blower's turning on, but it's not doing a hundred percent and it's going to be a potential problem. We want to catch that before it breaks for you. It's kind of like driving a car. If you got a low tire, sure. You may get from point A to point B, but is it working like it's supposed to be? We get that old question a lot. It's like, well, how come it's working? Well, it's doing okay, but it could be doing better. And like Dustin says, efficiency and stuff like that. So that's how come it talks about a trained professional as well, because we do have the tools for it. And I, I think sometimes that's another place where technicians can kind of shoot themselves in the foot if they go out there and they're too aggressive oh, yeah. with, uh, <laughs> with their recommendations. Uh, you can come across as like, hey, you're just looking for stuff to do. You, you come out, my air conditioner's working fine. You're recommending, you know, $400 of, you know, repairs and, and things like that. And, and I called and got a second opinion. They came out and said, there's nothing wrong. You, you know what I mean? And so it's, it's one of those things where, again, it goes back to one of the things that I'm grateful for as far as like our service philosophy is you go out there, you educate and you give options and ultimately it's up to the customer. So if you're doing, if you're doing a thorough tune up, uh, and documenting your findings and educating the, the the homeowner on the condition of the system, like you can sleep at night because they had the information and they made the decision that was best for them. They might not have 400 bucks and they want to go another, you know, whatever. And that's not your position to like try and make them feel bad. Like ugh, you, you got to do this or the thing's going to like break. No, we definitely don't want to do that. Well, and the thing of it is, is your technician, they're trained. Um, they don't have a crystal ball. They're not going to be able to tell you. True. And that's a question that comes up a lot is, well, do you think it'll last this long? And you know, the question is, well, I really can't tell you. All I, all I can tell you is I know what the manufacturer says and I know where this should be and I can tell you where it's at right now. And uh, there's a high probability that it may not last as long as what you're hoping it will. And so that's what we're trying to avoid is uh, those breakdowns, especially, and then this is the thing, uh, it seems like your worst breakdowns are always <laughs> that hottest week in July when it's 105 degrees outside and everybody's breaks at the same time. And that's when it's the hardest time to get somebody out there. It's fourth of come. July weekend when you have a party. Plan. Oh yeah. And it, yeah, exactly. You've got everybody at your house. It just seems like that's what always happens because that's when that's, it's a high use time, you know, it's and when so, it's under the most pressure. And so when those weak components, when they have, when, when they're put under that strain and they've been going and going and going, that's when they break, you know? And so <laughs> it's a, it's a smart thing to do to prevent that kind of stuff. Is it going to prevent it a hundred percent? You know, again, no crystal balls, but it makes the likelihood that you're going to last a lot longer, uh, go up significantly. Hmm. Well, this is a good episode. Um, anything else, any final comments before we wrap up? No, I think you did fantastic. It was saying, turn it on, run it for a little bit and go over the things we talked about. I think that's great advice. Awesome. It doesn't have to be overly complicated what's no. going on. So, and that's the thing is we think that it is, but really. And the things are so robust that, you know, that's the thing is like, you really should like just be able to like flip your thermostat over and it does kick over to the air conditioner mode. And as long as there's nothing major wrong, 
you should be at, you don't, and that actually, that is a question sometimes that I get more really from in the, as we're going into winter with the furnaces saying, do I have to do something like, cause they're worried about the, the gas and the thing burning properly. And you know, it's nothing to be afraid of Go and kick the thing on. That's, that's your main thing, kick it on and then go through these steps that we talked about and look for some things that aren't working. And if they're not call somebody, cause right now you can get somebody out to your house probably pretty quickly. So mm-hmm. yep. anyway, thanks so much for listening to this episode of in the house. We release new episodes every Tuesday. If you've enjoyed this episode, please subscribe. Do me a favor. If you have time, go to iTunes and leave a review for the show. Let us know what you think, what you like, what you don't like. Actually just tell us the things you like. Cause I, I'm sensitive. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'd like to thank my guest, Kevin, Dustin, Dick, uh, for being here, Austin, a co-producer behind the scenes and all of the, other people behind the scenes that help make this possible. If you'd like to know more about any hour services, check us out at anyhourservices.com. I've been your host, Mike Wilson, and you've been listening to in the house. 